Hello, my name's Amanda Little and up until recently I was technical editor here at Sewing Quarter. Really pleased to be able to spend the next hour with you. Um, I'm going to show you how to make this quilt behind me and also let you know what I'm going to be up to in the future. Right, <laughs> so this quilt um, is actually going to be available as a free pattern on my website for you to download uh, as a PDF. It's a really quick, really easy quilt to construct. It's made using just half of a five inch charm pack and one full jelly roll, um, obviously plus your background fabric um, to sash it with and um, your binding fabric. Super quick um, because if you're using pre-cuts, uh, there's minimal cutting to do. Um, you can also use um, yardage, you could use fat quarters um, or you could use um, full full width of fabric strips. I'm going to show you how to make a smaller version of the quilt. Um, and for this one, I've used fat quarters. So we're going to start off with a five inch centre um, piece, a two by five side piece. You'll cut one of each of these, so one five inch square, one two by five inch squares. Then you will cut two um, two by seven inch rectangles. One goes on the bottom. We're going to work in a clockwise order, so centre and then working around. What I've tried to do with this quilt is use nine different fabrics, so it truly is a scrappy quilt. Um, one fabric only appears once within each block. It would work well um, traditionally. Your, uh, it's a log cabin quilt, it's a log cabin block. Traditionally, the centre uh, square would be red, which would represent the hearth, the, the hearth of the home. Sometimes it can be yellow um, for the, the, the daylight passing through the home. Half of uh, the logs would be dark. Uh, they would represent um, the dark side of life, basically, um, sort of death, um, failed harvests, uh, disease, that sort of thing. The other half of the block would be made from light coloured logs and that would represent the light, usually at the front of the house um, and that would obviously be happy, um, happy occasions, births, weddings, that sort of thing. Um, so we'll carry on. Uh, so we've got two um, two uh, two by seven uh, pieces and we've also got two two by nine pieces sorry beg your pardon i've already put that one on two two by nine pieces and two two by eleven pieces and then finally a two by thirteen inch piece now, if you were using a jelly roll, you would cut all of these pieces out of two strips, two full strips of jelly roll. Um, I've managed to get them uh, on my fat quarters. I cut four two and a half inch strips um, from uh, the fat quarters and I've managed to get all of these pieces, obviously by the, um, the, the centre piece, that's a uh, five inch square. So what I would do first off is lay out your pieces so that you're happy with the fabric placement. And the quickest and easiest way to construct a log cabin is to chain piece, which I will show you in a second. Now I would suggest that you lay your pieces out before you start to sew, just so that you can see how everything works together. Now that green stripe and the green dot are too close or too similar, so I'm going to swap that one with that one. Um, now I've got dots there, so perhaps Oops. 
I'll swap that one. No, I've got. To. I'm going to leave it as it is. Not ideal, but anyway, uh, you get the idea. So um, there are my pieces laid out, ready to work with. I'm just sorry. I'm going to have a, a quick drink. So what we need to do now in order to make this quilt come together as quickly as possible and as accurately as possible we want to get that elusive quarter of an inch scant quarter of an inch seam on my machine i have got a quarter of an inch foot which is great some machines your quarter inch foot uh, has a, a little guide a little guard at the side that you can butt your fabric up to as you pass it through those are good as well but there's they're sort of in quite a, a short a, a small area what I like is this seam guide. Now this is a Benina machine, so this is specific to Benina. But there is also one available that would fit if you've got a Janome or an Elna machine. Just have a Google because you can get hold of these and they are brilliant. They give you such a bigger surface area to push your fabric against. Sometimes with the smaller guards, it's great once, you know, sort of it's under the machine, but there's, there's leeway for, for the fabric to, to manoeuvre. Whereas with these, it keeps everything nice and steady. There's also, which um, is good to use, uh, a, a ruler with the scant quarter of an inch marked on it and a tiny little hole drilled through. And what you do with that, you just lower your needle through that hole. Once it's down, drop your foot. Make sure that the edge of the ruler is against the edge of the foot. And then just tighten the screw on the guide. And that's secure and you're good to go. So then just obviously lift and pop that to one side, <coughs> excuse me. Now to just check that we have actually got that scant quarter of an inch seam allowance, we can do a little test. And what I've done here, I've got two, sorry, three, um, two and a half inch squares. Try and cut them as accurately as you can. And we're just gonna sew them together. And hopefully if we've got that scant quarter of an inch seam, we should end up with a, a, a strip that's six and a half inches long once it's been pressed. I'll flick that tiny iron on. So what we're gonna do, pop them under the machine. Now when I'm piecing my patchwork, I like to work with um, uh, number two stitch uh, for piecing, just slightly smaller. Um, just make sure that your uh, seams are nice and secure, especially because we don't back stitch with patchwork. Um, so that smaller stitch just keeps everything nice and secure. What I also like to do is to use a, um, a, a leader, uh, a leader or an ender. It's just literally a scrap piece of fabric that's probably, I don't know, an inch by half an inch, something like that. Fold it over, pop it underneath your machine. Now if your machine has got the needle down function, that is great, keep it in needle down and just sew until you get to the end or thereabouts of that leader. What that does, it, uh, for, for one, it um, saves your thread. Uh, I've got Orifil on here. I, I do like the Orifil and I know it, it seems expensive, um, but I, I think it's worth it. And you do actually get twice as much Orifil thread um, on the bobbin as you do on, on, on other brands. Um, but uh, so that I'm not wasting any of the precious thread. I like to put my leader through first, then take my patchwork piece, just lift the foot, and then just continue sewing straight through. When I get to the end of that patchwork piece, I'm gonna take, snip the leader off, and it can go, I'll take that thread off, it can go, back under
so that I can take this piece out and then sew the next piece to it. It also, as well, with using the leader, you get uh, complete stitches at either end of your patchwork. Sometimes if you just put your patchwork straight under, the thread pulls down into the feed dogs, you end up with a bit of a bird's nest. Um, and you can sometimes get some loose stitches at the start and the end of your um, seam. With using the starter and the leader, it seems to eradicate that. So back, actually I'll sew it, sew it on that end. Back underneath, And then we we'll go again. And again, just snip off. Because I'm only doing one piece, it seems a little bit long-winded. But if you're chain piecing a lot of patchwork pieces, that starter and leader works really well. So what we're going to do now, just press the seams to set them. And then just, it doesn't really matter which way you press these, it's just a test to make sure that we've got the right seam allowance before we start. And then just take your ruler and hopefully that should measure six and a half inches so we know now that we're good to go and because we're using pre-cuts or we've got the option to use pre-cuts they're cut at two and a half inches and five inches we know we've got our quarter of an inch seam our block should be absolutely perfect once we've finished so to start you're going to take your center square and your two by two and a half by five inch rectangle Now you can pin if you want to, on such small pieces I don't tend to, but we're going to pop that one through. Leave that under the needle, take the next block, I have got a, a free hand lift on this machine, but I've got really short legs <laughs> and I can't reach it when I'm stood up. So I'm having to, having to use the handle. So we'll snip that first one off. Keep the ender safe on one side. Now you can press and we're going to press the seams away from that center five inch square. I don't know if that picks up. Or, which I'll show you on the next one, um, you can be a rebel and, and just crease with your finger, which is what I tend to do um, when I'm completing the block. It's only at the very end that I would then probably use the iron to press it. So first log attached, we're going to work clockwise, second log now. What I would do is just grab the ends, because we're not using any pins, hold them together, just make sure that they're mating and just send them through the machine. And again, just leave it caught, that last stitch, snip that one off. So what I would do, working at home, is just run my nail down, a bit naughty, but it works perfectly well. So second piece. Now 
And again, just leave your needle in. And again, press seam away from the centre square. Add on third log. You can check from time to time to make sure that your uh, partially completed block is the correct size. I'm going to say we've checked the seam allowance. Our cutting was accurate because we've used pre cuts. So, fingers crossed, it should all be fine at the other end. Now this small quilt that I'm making now, I'm just going to do three by three blocks, which would be ideal for um, a baby mat, a play mat for a baby. Um, you could, I'm using completely different fabrics for each log, so it's going to have a scrappy look. Um, you could use yardage um, and do it in the traditional manner and have that centre square and then uh, light logs and dark logs. It's entirely up to you. So there we go so far. I'm going to take, uh, no I'm not, I'm on that side. No, there we go, take that one. Snip off that one. Again, press to the outside so that would fit there. I'm going to take that section and add it. Did actually, I did make the rest of the quilt, you'll be pleased to know. It's just these blocks that I need to make for you before we can carry on. Okay, so there we go. So green next. As the logs start to get longer, you might at this point want to consider using a pin just to hold it securely. Right now I have taken. Um, so as the logs get longer, what I would do is fold the log in half and just finger press to get a crease, finger press the side of the block that you're going to be attaching it to and you've got a reference mark now to join together and maybe just use a couple of pins, so a pin in the centre and because I've got this long guard on my machine um, I like to put the pins in perpendicular so that um, the, when they go through the machine, the pin isn't going to interfere with that guide. And as I approach the pin, I can just whip it out to the side. I would perhaps just pop, put another pin at the very end and snake 
that pin rather than just one, um, just so it holds that securely. Top portion, I don't tend to bother with a pin because I can just hold that with my fingers. Um, I do like the blue pins. The blue pins are finer than the pink pins if you're looking to buy more pins. Uh, blue ones, in my opinion, are the, the best. They don't mark your fabric. So I'm just going to take that pin out now. Carry on to the end. And because I've snaked that pin, it's holding the whole section straight. If you just sort of pop a tiny uh, amount in, sometimes this can still manoeuvre about. Again, press to the outside. So that one now, I think I've probably got the piles mixed up, but it doesn't matter because I've not got that fabric in there yet. So perhaps a pin at the end. And we'll just hold it at the top. If you find that you've got or one portion is slightly fuller than the portion that you're trying to sew it to. So for instance, if this block was slightly oversized, I would always put the baggier, the, the excess fabric underneath against the feed dogs and have what you perceive to be the shorter piece of fabric at the top because you can always then just pull it. The feed dogs will do the work on the bottom fabric and take it through and then you can just manipulate and stretch that top fabric to get the two pieces to sit together. If you're lucky enough to have the dual feed function on your sewing machine, um, you can adjust that and get it to do it for you automatically. So again, seams away from the block. And I'm going to take that piece. And again, just one uh, pin, just because strips are starting to get a little bit long. But just position the top. And away we go. So next piece is going to be this yellow. Something else that's quite nice to use sometime, if you're piecing small pieces, and you find that your fingers are, you know, sort of just in the way, there's too much going on underneath the presser foot, you can use um, an awl, a tailor's awl, um, and just position your fabric, and then just pop the awl on, just to guide the fabric through, especially if you get, to, when you get to the end of a piece of fabric, and there isn't enough fabric left for your fingers to hold on to, you can just rest the tip of the awl on it and feed it through. So now, if I take that pin out, I can just rest the awl on and send that all the way through without damaging my fingers.
So we're nearly there. Uh, so it's going to be this piece, yeah. Now, if you're using pre-cuts, they tend to have a pinked edge. And sometimes, I know when I first started patchwork and quilting, I was never absolutely sure whether you should butt the pointed portion of the um, pinked edge or the, I suppose, the trough portion against the, the, the fabric that you were sewing together. It's always the point of... Um, the, the, the pink edge, so that the outermost point is the one that should sit against the edge of the fabric that you're sewing it to. And the good thing about using the jelly roll and charm pack combination is that the fabrics should coordinate if you've bought from the same range and they won't fray. I mean, these aren't fraying too badly that you, you probably wouldn't get any fraying at all if you'd use charm pack and jelly roll pre-cuts. seems to be going okay. So last piece onto this block. What I did uh, forget to tell you is I've starched um, with this fabric being fat quarter um, or if you were using yardage, uh, I would tend to starch before I started to cut. But if I was using a pre-cut, if I was using um, charm pack and jelly roll, I wouldn't use starch. I can remember one of my earlier quilts. I um, sat for what seemed hours starching every single piece uh, from the jelly roll pack um, and it was a layer cake I believe um, and followed this pattern religiously only to find that I'd shrunk about half an inch from each of um, the layer cake pieces so then had to fudge the pattern to get the quilt to work. So we're at the end now. I'm just going to pop that ender back in and just leave it there ready to start the next section. Again, seams to the outside. You could press them open, but I like to press them to the outside. So there we've got two completed blocks. Perhaps not the best placement there, but you could work that out for yourself at home. So what we're going to do now, uh, in between each block, I should have said uh, the blocks finish at 13 inches um, un 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 
sewn together. Uh, once they're in the quilt, they should be a 12 and a half inch square. OK, so you might want to check at this point. I would normally press now with the iron um, and then just give them a quick. Actually, we're just. Yeah, 13 inches. Yeah, that's good. OK, so we've got um, a 13 inch unfinished, 12 and a half inch finished block. And those are sashed with um, a four and a half inch strip. So once that's sewn between the blocks, that becomes a four inch strip. So we'll just quickly get that done. I've got one here. And I work a row at a time. So we're going to sew them up in that sequence. Again, if you want to, finger press in the middle. just so that everything matches up. Especially if you've used, I mean, you can see the, the white fabric that I'm using is perhaps not as good a quality as the pattern fabric. It's just got a, a slightly more open weave and a bit more stretch about it. So putting that pin in the middle is gonna hopefully ensure that everything stays lined up. So again, I'm going to snake that last pin just to keep that secure, but the top one we'll just go for. This is when you all can help as well. So I've got some seams now. That seam should be um, pressed away from the, the centre of the block. Um, so what I'm going to do is just use my awl to press it down as it goes under the foot, just to make sure that it doesn't flip up on itself. And then just hold that end and stretch it just to make sure that it fits. No, I'll pop that one through now. So these two together. I'm just going to use my awl to make sure this stays lying in the direction I want it to. It started to flip, so just lift your foot. It's important to keep your seams going in the right direction, um, especially if you're using, um, in this case, a whiter sheer fabric. I'll show you in a second. This bit now, if you're using a sheer fabric like I am, it's important now to press the seams towards the block. If we were to press it like that, especially when it's up against, um, if you imagine that this is layered onto your wadding, you're going to see a slight shadow come through on your fabric, um, which it just spoils the effect. After all that hard work, you don't want ugly shadows showing through. So what we're going to do is press the sashing towards the blocks. Um, if you're using a dark fabric, then it doesn't matter as much. But I do think it's worth it with a white fabric. 
and it's at this point now where I would start to use the iron. Okay, so there's one done. Um, and we'll just do this one. So all we need to do now then is just add that last block on to complete the row. So just check that your small 2x5 verticals are all in the same position. And then we'll just sew that last seam. So there's our completed row. We've got all of our seams in our blocks radiating to the out, uh, outer edges and um, the seams on the sashing going towards the blocks. So all we need to do now is to add the horizontal sashing, which I've already started to do. I don't know. I haven't got enough space. So we've got three across and three down. So we just need now the. Um, I'll, I'll show you how I uh, attach this uh, the horizontal sashing to the blocks. Um, so that across and then all that's left then to do is the borders. Um, so. We know that our block is, uh, it started off at 13 inches. We've sewn a seam, so now it's reduced to um, 12 and three quarters. Four and a half has now become four. 12 and three quarters for 12 and three, uh, sorry, 12 and a half, because that's sewn on both sides, and 12 and three quarters. So what I'm gonna do is just mark my horizontal sashing piece um, at those increments just so that we can match it up. Um, I get a lot of people um, bring me quilts to quilt and they've spent so much time and effort on their block and that their piecing is gorgeous and then they've just perhaps either rushed or not realised how to get their sashing lined up um, and it, it just sort of spoils it. Um, so I'll quickly show you how to do that so that you're going to get perfect sashing every time. I'll just turn that iron off. So take your ruler, you can use any pen, pencil and so we know we've still got a, a quarter of an inch there so we could put the quarter of an inch mark, we'll put that at the top 
and then we know that our block is 12 and a half inches. We know that the sashing is four. Another 12 and a half. And then four. go 12 and a half and there's that quarter of an inch that's still waiting there um, now I've already cut my borders my uh, horizontal sashing um, because I've already attached it to those other blocks um, but if you're unsure what I would do is just square off the first or the, the one side of your uh, sashing put your measurements on put your measurements all the way to the end but just leave the end um, extra long and chop it off um, once you're, you're happy that everything fits. Um, it should, I mean, if you've checked your quarter of an inch seam, if you've been really careful piecing your blocks, it should fit absolutely perfectly. Um, if it doesn't, I would say perhaps step away from the sewing machine, um, pop the kettle on, get your own picker because you've gone wrong somewhere. Um, but hopefully that won't be a problem. Actually, we'll do it this way. So I am going to, because it's such a long length of fabric to sew together, I am going to, to pin. So edges. Together. And now this seam here, in between your block and your sashing, we're going to match up with that mark that we made. The next seam, again against the mark that we just made, find the mark for the next block. End of the next sash. And fingers crossed, just a little bit of excess there. And what you can do now is just in between the pins, just pull that taut and pop another pin. in the centre. So again, just pull it taut and just hold that centre portion together. And then it's one long seam to sew up. And then just grab for your next pin, pull that taut, sew that section.
you need to use your awl just to keep that flat. So at this point now I'm conscious of time and then it's really boring watching me show so straight seams. So here we've got, I don't know if you can see that. So that is the centre, sashed centre of um, your baby size quilt, nine blocks. Um, what I would do now and what I will carry on at home and perhaps if my daughter's home from university um, she might <laughs> help me suss out this YouTube business um, and we'll put the side sash, what I would do next is put the side um, sashings on, uh, side borders rather, and then the top and bottom, always sides, and if, if you think about hat and, and shoes, hat and shoes last on, um, uh, pop those on, they're just going to be white the only thing that's different with these is that they're six and a half inches unfinished, whereas these were four and a half inches unfinished. So top uh, sides and top and bottom borders. At that point, then give it a really good press and it's ready to quilt. And what you'll find, because you've been so careful and measured your sashing, everything is going to measure up perfectly so if you choose to do some sort of linear I mean that is a, a wavy line but if you wanted to do um, a, a straight line quilting finish you, you can be confident that your blocks and your sashing are all going to line up um, and you, you, your quilting is going to look really pristine um, so that's that bit done as I say, I'll finish this, I'll try and film it myself um, and I'm going to be doing some YouTube videos hopefully. So I'll show you at home how to complete the quilt and, uh, sorry, this was the, I'm going to use this green fabric, the stripe, to bind it with. And what I thought might be quite nice is if you could watch the YouTube video um, and subscribe to the YouTube channel when it's there. Um, that would really help me to be able to continue to give you um, tutorials like this. And um, I will do um, a giveaway. Right, so, <laughs> so Joe's just told me I've got 10 minutes left. Um, I'll do a giveaway. I'll get this, I'll, I'll show you how to complete the quilt. Um, you're going to be able to get the PDF. Oh, and the cushion, yes. Um, uh, I'll show you how to complete the quilt. Um, you'll be able to get the PDF from my uh, website. You'll need to go to my website, which is www.littlequilthouse.co.uk. From the 1st of January, there'll be a PDF for you to download. That'll have the instructions for the large quilt. 
Um, that one is four blocks by five blocks and that fits on a single bed with a, a slight overhang. Um, you can obviously follow this video that we've, we've just done here um, just to, to reduce it down to a, a, a nine block size which would be great for a baby playmat. Um, when, the quilt, when I've quilted it and I've bound it I'll do a giveaway. Um, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel um, I'll just do a random draw and the winner, I will package this quilt up for you and send it out to you. Um, I've also got another giveaway for you. This is a cushion that I've quilted. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's uh, approximately 20 by 20 inches. Um, so we've got some nice fancy quilting on the front. Um, it's uh, piped edges and a zip at the bottom. And you've probably just seen at the back, John has really kindly signed it for me. It's a permanent fabric pen. I perhaps still wouldn't risk putting it in the wash. Um, but um, I'm gonna give this away as well. Not the cushion inside, just the cushion cover. Um, just because it's huge and it's going to cost me a fortune to send it to you. Um, but I will send you the cushion cover. All, you, all you'll need to supply is your 20-inch um, pad. And um, so to be able to win this in the giveaway, um, I just would like you, if you would, be so kind as to like and follow my Facebook page and my Instagram page. Um, and also the YouTube channel if you would. So this one, three, three, ways, to, three ways to win it. Um, Facebook, Instagram or YouTube and the Baby Playmat Quilt, um, that one is going to be just a YouTube giveaway. Um, thanks ever so much for your time. I hope I haven't bored you with the incessant <laughs> straight seam sewing. Um, it's, it's been lovely um, to, to have the opportunity to, um, to, to talk to you for this hour. Um, I've sort of lurked in the background whilst I've been at Sewing Quarter. Um, I've only really been on air once or twice before. Um, so this has been a real opportunity for me. So thanks to, um, to the management for allowing me. Um, I'm not sure when you're going to see this video. Uh, so Merry Christmas if you celebrate it. Happy New Year and um, keep in touch. Thanks a lot. Bye.